You're trying to tire out your over-enthused puppy with a game of fetch. You want to get a little bit of extra distance on the ball, so you take a run up and you add your 5 meters per second of running to your 10 meters per second of throwing and the ball blasts off into the distance at 15 meters per second relative to the ground followed by your four-legged mud collector. Okay, addition, yep, with you so far. You're trying to tire out your under-enthused cat. As you know, cats are only motivated by interactions with laser beams and the opportunity to knock something off of a shelf. So you unsheath your favorite laser, and to add a little bit more speed, you take a run up and you add your five meters per second of running speed to your three times 10 to the eighth meters per second of photon speed. And the photons blast away from you at three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. I guess that's why they call it the speed of light. So what's happening? You're living in Minkowski space. Mink, Minkowski. 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 Am I heading along the right lines? No. Minkowski space is a four-dimensional manifold which houses the framework of Einstein's theory of special relativity. That's weird. All those, um, all those sounded like words, and yet I'm left with absolutely no understanding. Okay, let's break it down. Four dimensions, three dimensions that we're used to, space, basically, up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards, plus the fourth dimension of time, four. The idea being that space and time are two different sides of the same coin. They're fundamentally linked, and you can't move through one without also moving through the other. So you can think of an object moving through time and space as having coordinates. Time, X position, Y position, and Z position. You might be more familiar with this idea if I call it space-time. It's just like the X and Y graph that you're used to, except one step harder, or, t or two. Now how do we know Minkowski space, or space-time, isn't something that's just made up by physicists that are just trying to confuse us about everything? We need this idea because there is a speed limit to the universe. This maximum speed is often called the speed of light, however, it is equally the speed of gravitational waves or anything without mass. We're used to making it synonymous with the speed of light because that's how Einstein first thought of it, so really we're just following his footsteps. But really it's just the speed that any particle without mass travels through space. In an exceptionally quick version, this speed limit exists because Einstein correctly postulated that physics should appear the same for anyone that looks at it, regardless of their relative speed. Now, light is an electromagnetic wave, which is described by Maxwell's equations. And Maxwell's equations are also independent of how fast you are moving. So everyone, regardless of how fast they are moving, should measure the speed of light to be the same. Meaning that you can never even hope to catch up to a photon speeding away from you, regardless of how fast you are traveling, it will always be going the same speed away from you, which intuitively makes absolutely no sense, but that's because we don't understand that we live in space-time. We understand we live in this three-dimensional space and time sort of ticks along in the background completely independent. What is actually happening is that time and space are linked and that as we try and move through one, it subverts some of our movement in the other directions. In order for what we've just said to work, Space-time needs to be able to bend and stretch and contort, sort of like the surface of a trampoline. And it's incorrect to ever think of yourself as fundamentally at rest. Even if you think you're lying in bed, you're actually still moving relative to something like the moon. And even faster, something like the sun, and even faster, something like the galaxy, and even faster, something like surrounding galaxies. But regardless of at what point we take the measurement, we should always find C the speed of light to be the same. You may be surprised to learn that not only is it the speed limit of the universe, it is also the speed of all objects through space and time. Not even breaking a sweat. Take a second to appreciate what that idea actually means. Sitting at your computer, perfectly still, you are moving at the speed of light. But you are moving at the speed of light mostly through time. How are we supposed to think about this? How does this make sense? This is where Minkowski space comes into play. It's basically like being given an arrow when you're born, which describes the direction in space-time that you're currently traveling. Ah, God, right in the eye. Just stop giving those out. It has a certain length, and that length is the same for everyone, and it describes the speed of light. Think about it just in terms of a 2D plot, with time pointing north and space pointing east. Now all we can do is change the relative direction that this arrow is pointing. We can't change its overall magnitude, because that is the speed of light. 
that's what it represents. When you sit still, your relative velocity is zero, so the arrow just points straight north and you travel through time at the speed of light. As you move faster and faster through space, your rate of travel through time decreases until you reach close to the speed of light where time slows to a crawl. And so we realized this grand idea about space-time, which is that space and time are fundamentally linked around the object which is trying to measure them. So there is no universal clock kind of ticking us on towards infinity. We are all distinct entities with commonality only bound by our comparable relative velocity. We only experience time the same way as our loved ones because we are moving at the same relative velocity-ish to them. Should we go to depart the Earth that close to the speed of light, our time would barely trickle by, and upon our return, the Earth that we return to would be a very different place, having experienced millions of years. Now a photon has no mass, so it does travel at the speed of light. So a photon does not experience time. It radiates out across the universe following the gravitational contours of space-time, forever the age that it was created at. As the world rushes past them in time, they travel through space until they're annihilated on some valence electron and blink out of existence forever. Hey, stop emotionally connecting with that photon. If you like this sort of thing, then maybe subscribe and I'll do a few more. Bye.